it looks to me like Wells uh, made some big mistakes in what they incentivize, and as Charlie says, there's nothing like incentives, but they can incentivize the wrong behavior. And I've seen that a lot of places, and the, the, that clearly existed at Wells. Uh, the interesting thing is, to the extent that they set up fake accounts, a couple million of them that had no balance in them, that could not possibly have been profitable to, to Wells. Uh, so you're going to incentivize some crazy things. The, the problem is, I'm sure, is that, uh, and I don't really have any inside information on it but, at all, but, but when you find a problem, you have to do something about it. And, and uh, uh, I think that's where they probably made a mistake at Wells Fargo. They made it at Solomon. I mean, uh, John, John Goodfriend would never have of uh, played around with the government. He was the CEO of Solomon in 1991. He never would have done what the bond trader did that, that, that played around with the rules that the federal government had about government bond betting. But when he heard about it, he didn't immediately notify the Federal Reserve. And he heard about it in late April. And May 15th, the government bond auction came along, and Paul Mosier did the same thing he'd done before and gamed the auction. And at this point, John Goodfriend, you know, the destiny of Solomon was straight downhill from that stand, from that point forward, because essentially he heard about a about a pyromaniac, and he let it con keep, keep the box of matches. And and uh, uh, at Wells, my understanding, there was an article in the Los Angeles Times, uh, maybe a couple of years before the whole thing uh, was exposed, and uh, you know. Somebody ignored that article, and uh, Charlie has beaten me over the head all the years at Berkshire because we have 390,000 employees, and I will guarantee you that, that some of them are doing things that are wrong right now. There's no way to have a city of 390,000 people and not need, a, uh, not need a policeman or a court system, and, and uh, some people don't follow the rules, and, uh, and you can't incentivize the wrong behavior. You've got to do something about it when it happens. Uh, Wells has become... Uh, you know, exhibit one uh, in recent years, but it, go back a few years, you know, you, you can almost go down. There's quite a list of banks where people behave badly, and, and where they, I would not say, I don't know the specifics at Wells, but I've actually written in the annual report that uh, uh, they talk about moral hazard if they, they allow people, to, the shareholders of, of Wells, I paid a price. The shareholders of Citicorp paid a price. The shareholders of Goldman Sachs, the shareholders of Bank of America, they paid billions and billions of dollars, and they didn't commit the acts. And of course, nobody did go. There were no jail sentences, and and that is infuriating. But the the lesson is, that was taught was not that the government would bail you out because the government the government uh, got its money back, but the shareholders of the various banks paid many many billions of dollars, and. Uh, uh, I don't have any advice for anybody running a business except when you find out something is leading to bad results or bad behavior, you know, you, if you're in the top job, you've got to take action fast. And uh, that's why we have hotlines. That's why we get, when we get a not certain anonymous letters, we, we turn them over uh, to the audit committee or to outside uh, investigators. And, uh, and we will have, I will guarantee you that we will have some people do things that are wrong at, at Berkshire in the next year, five years, 10 years, and 50 years. It's, it, uh, you cannot have 390,000 people. And it, it's the one thing that always worries me about my job, but, uh, because uh, I've got to hear about those things and I've got to do something about them uh, when I do hear about them. Charlie? Well, <clears throat> I don't think people ought to go to jail for honest errors of judgment. It's bad enough to lose your job. and. I don't think that any of those top officers was deliberately malevolent in any way. I just, we're talking about honest errors in judgment. And I don't think Tim Sloan even committed honest errors of his judgment. I just think he was an accidental casualty that didn't deserve the trouble. Yeah, I, I wish this Tim, Tim Sloan was still there. Yeah, there's no evidence that he, he did a thing, but he, he stepped up to take a job that, that where he was going to get the pinata, basically. Uh, uh, 
for all kinds of uh, investigations, and, and rightfully, Wells should be checked out on everything they do. All banks should. I mean, uh, they get they get a government guarantee, and they and they receive trillions of dollars in deposits, uh, and. Uh, uh, they do that because of the basically because of the FDIC, and, and uh, uh, if they abuse that, they should pay a price. And if anybody does anything uh, like a uh, like a Paul Mosier did, for example, of Solomon, they ought to go to jail. Paul Mosier only went to jail for four months, but but uh, 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 if you're if you're if you're breaking laws, uh, you should be prosecuted on it. If you do a lot of dumb things. Uh, uh, I wish they wouldn't go away, the CEOs wouldn't go away so rich under those circumstances, but, but people will do dumb things. <laughs> I actually proposed, I think I, it may have been in one of the annual reports even, I, I proposed that if a, if a bank gets to where it needs government assistance, that uh, uh, basically the, the responsible CEO should lose his net worth and his spouse's net worth. If he doesn't want the job under those circumstances, you know, and I think that the directors, uh, I think they should come after the directors for the last five years, I think I proposed of, their, of all, uh, of everything they've received. Uh, but it's the shareholders who pay. I mean, that uh, if we own 9% of Wells, whatever this has cost, 9% of it is being borne by, by us, and uh, 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 it's very hard to tie it directly. One, one thing you should know, incidentally, though, is that the FDIC, which was started, I think it was started January 1st, 1934, but it, it was a New Deal proposal. And the FDIC uh, has not cost the United States government a penny. It now has about $100 billion in it, and that money has all been put in there by the banks, and that's covered all the losses of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of financial institutions. and. Uh, I think the impression is that, that the government the government guarantees save the banks, but the government money did not save the banks. The bank's money as an industry not only has paid every loss, but they've accumulated an extra hundred billion, and that's the reason the FDIC assessments now are going back down. They had them at a, at a high level, and they had a higher level for the very big banks. So it, it, uh, uh, when, you, when you hear all the talk about, the political talk about the banks, they have not cost the federal government. Okay, they have. They did. A, there were a lot of actions that took place that should not have taken place, uh, and there's a lot fewer now, I think, than there were in the period leading up to 2008 and 9. But uh, uh, some banks will make big mistakes in the future. <laughs>